In this video, we are going to cover how to graph piecewise defined functions and also how to write equations, how to write an equation that models the graph we're given. So we're going to start with the first four are going to actually graph what we're provided. I'm going to start by looking at what I call the boundary lines. So I'm going to go on my graph, I'm going to find where x equals 1, and I'm going to make a dotted line vertically going through where x equals 1. On this graph, I have both a right side and I have a left side. On one side, I'll graph y equals 2x. On the other side, I'll graph y equals negative x plus 3. And I'm going to tell you how do you know which side to graph it on. So let's start with this. Remember, f of x is the same as y. So I'm looking at y equals 2x, like 2 over 1x. So when I look at this graph, I can think of this as an arrow. The arrow says you want to graph to the right. So for this particular equation, I wanted to graph it to the right of the boundary line. So how do I start graphing it? You're going to use this number, and it's going to be your input. We're going to substitute it in for x. 2 times 1 is 2. So I go to 1, 2, over 1, up 2, and I make an open circle. Then I come back to the inequality symbol, and I can see there is a line underneath. That means that I'm going to shade this in. It's included. How do I actually graph the point? I'm going to use the slope. So I'm going up 2, right 1, up 2, right 1, excuse me, up 2, right 1, and continuous like that. Take your ID, and we have half the problem done. Okay, let's do the next part. So now I'm looking at the second part. Y equals negative X plus 3. Remember, this is like a negative 1 over 1. And if I look at the inequality symbol, think of this as an arrow. It says shade to the left. So on this portion is where I'm going to create this. Now, how do I start by creating it? Again, my input comes from this boundary line. It comes from 1, and I'm going to substitute 1 in here. So I have negative 1 over 1 times 1 plus 3. My input is 1. Let's figure out what my output is. Negative 1 plus 3 is 2. It just happens to be the exact same spot. Just happens. Just coincidence. Not always going to happen. So I'm at 1, 2, and I have an open circle. It is filled in from the previous piece of the function. But I need to create a line. And so I go back to the slope. Now, unlike, unlike how I graphed this first one, Anytime I graph something to the left of this boundary line, it's going to do opposite of what we think. We're, we're programmed to think go down one and go right one, but when you go left of the boundary line, you do the opposite. So I'm going to go up one and left one. Up one, left one, up one, left one. We're going to move to number three. I'll come back to number two afterwards. So in this problem, the first thing I do is I look at the boundary line. I go to where x equals 2. I go to where x equals 2, and I make the boundary line. So I'm going to start with y equals 1 half x minus 4. Thinking of this as an arrow, I'm going to shade to the right. I'm going to shade to the right. So it's on this portion of the graph. Well, how do I get started? Remember, I'm going to start with the boundary. That's my input. And now what's the output? So I plug 2 in where I see an x. So I have 1 half times 2 minus 4. Well, I know half of 2 is 1, and 1 minus 4 is negative 3. So I'm going to graph the point 2, negative 3. How do I know if it's open or closed? I come back to the inequality symbol because it's a line underneath. It means I include it as part of the graph, and so I will shade it in. Now from that point, I need to still create the line. I go back to the slope, because it's on the right-hand side, I follow what I've been programmed to think, rise over run. Positive 1, so up 1, right 2, up 1, right 2, up 1, right 2, and so on. The second one, y equals negative 3x plus 7. Remember, it's like a negative 3 over 1. I look at the inequality symbol, and really it says like shade to the left. Shade to the left, right? Think of this as an arrow. So it's in this portion. So I start by plugging in the boundary number of 2. Negative 3 times 2 is negative 6. When I add 7 to it, I end up with a 1. So I'm going to graph 2, 1. And now I decide should it be open or closed. Because there's no line underneath, I'm going to keep it open. How do I actually graph the line? I come up here, and I look at the slope. 
Because I'm on the left-hand side, I do the opposite. Instead of going down, I'm going to go up. Instead of going to the right, I'm going to go to the left. When it's on the left-hand side, you do the reverse of what you think for rise over run. So I'm going to go up three, one, two, three, over one, up three, over one, up three, over one, and connect. Down to number two. What's different about number two versus one and three is that we see an equal sign. Please go to your paper, draw a little arrow to the where you see the x equals zero, and write solid dot. Whenever you see x equals a value, it will be a solid dot. So what's different about number two versus problems one and three is not only do I have three different pieces versus two, I also have an equal sign. All right, let's get started. So here's the first one. I'm going to go with y equals x minus 3. So it's a 1 over 1 in front, y equals 1 over 1x minus 3. I look at the arrow and I can see the arrow wants me to go to the right. What I forgot to do is I forgot to look at the boundary lines. So I'm going to illustrate the boundary lines with a highlighter. I know I want to go to the right of that based on what I see here. So how do I get started? Well, I look at the boundary number, it's 0, that's my input, and now what's my output? I plug in 0 and I can do mental math. 1 times 0 is 0, 0 minus 3 is negative 3. So go to 0, negative 3 and make an open circle. I come back up here, I can see it's still going to remain as an open circle because there's no line underneath. Now how do I come up with a line? Go to the slope, anything to the right, we follow the directions that we, um, that we have learned. Up one, right one, up one, right one, up one, right one, and so on. The easiest one is actually the middle one. It's y equals negative 2. y equals negative 2. So my input is 0, and my output is what y equals. My output is negative 2. So I go to 0, negative 2, and I make a solid dot. Once again, anytime you have x equals a value, it will be a solid dot. The third one here is y equals negative 3x. Put a 1 underneath y equals negative 3x, put a 1 underneath. I look at the arrow and I know that I need to shade to the left of this boundary line. So how do we get started? We're going to start with the input of 0. When I plug, to, plug in 0, 0 times negative 3 is 0. I look back to this piece of the equation and I can see that it should be an open circle. Now, how do I actually graph the line? Well, I look at the slope. Anything to the left of this line, we're going to do just opposite of what we think. So instead of going down 3 and right 1, we do the opposite. Up 3 and left 1. Up 3, left 1. Up 3, left 1. Number 4 is a step function. Please write that down. Number 4 is a step function. You'll see it literally looks like a step. Now, this one, I just want you to watch me do it because as you do this more often, you're going to show less work than what I am showing. So as I introduce you, if you did not watch the instructional video in advance, step functions, this is how I would start with. This is really y equals negative 1. So I'm going to go to where y equals negative 1, and I'm going to draw a horizontal line. I'd like you just to watch. There's a line y equals negative 1, but I don't want to do it throughout the whole graph. I only want to do it between negative 2 to 1. So I'm finding negative 2, I go to that line. Finding 1, I go to the line, and I go in between. Up here, I can see at negative 2, I keep an open circle. At 1, I'm going to color it in. And I erase everything else, which we can't really see. Okay, I'm going to go to y equals negative 3. So I go to where y equals negative 3, and I draw a line. Okay, then I go between 1 and 4 between 1 and 4. Here's 1, and here's 4. How do I know what's left open and what is, needs to be colored in? Well, at 1, it's going to be open. At 4, it's going to be colored in. Everything else would be erased, looking like a step. Now I go to where y equals negative 5. Oh, you know what I just did? My apologies, I didn't count correctly. This should have been here and here. I went all the way down to 4. My apologies. Okay, my next one is I'm going to go to 5. So on 5, 
I want to go between 4 and 7. On 5, I want to go between 4 and 7. So 4 all the way down 5 and 7. I can see at 4 it's open circle and at 7 it's a closed. And this would be my step function. If you're looking at your homework, yours may not have the little dots I have. They just represent good intersection points. So now in the next four problems, we want to be able to take a graph on a Cartesian plane, and we want to be able to model it with a correct equation that models what this exactly looks like. Okay, so first I'm going to illustrate the boundary line. So taking out that highlighter, I'm going to where x equals 3 and negative 2. I know this is positive 3, and I know this is negative 2. I have a diagonal line here, a straight diagonal line, and I'm going to refer back to what we learned in 8th and 9th grade. Y equals mx plus b. So from left to right, I'm going to figure out what is the slope. Up one, left one. Sorry, up one, right one. Up one, right one. So rise over run is 1 over 1. And now we need to determine what would be the y-intercept. So where, if I extended this line, where would it cross the y-axis? So I'm going to go in the opposite direction, and I'm going to keep that pattern going until I see where it would cross. And it would cross at 0, so plus 0. Up here, 1 over 1x plus 0. I will say a common mistake is students forget to attach the x to the slope. Now this part of the graph that I just came up with an equation, it doesn't cover the entire Cartesian plane. It's only in one portion. It's to the right of this boundary line. So now I need to identify that. It's to the right of this boundary line. So I put an x and a positive 3. It's to the right of this boundary line. So I use this arrow, and I put it in place. And now I have to decide, oh, I come back here. It is a solid dot, so there is a line that goes underneath. This middle one, we have a horizontal line. Horizontal lines are much easier than you think. You find where does it cross the y-axis? It crosses at a number 6. There's no x attached to it. It's just the number. But it doesn't occur over the entire graph. It's between these two boundary lines. I put the smaller of the two numbers first, the larger the number second, and now I have to determine what inequality symbols do I put in place. So I always tell students, start with the boundary line on the right. And I go, okay, this line goes to the left of it. And I draw a little arrow. Whatever arrow I have, I come up here and it's like I copy it and I paste it. And that's confusing for students. And now the only other thing you have to worry about is should they be without a line underneath or do I need to include the line? So let's check. Open circle, leave as is. Open circle, leave as is. Okay, the last one is like our first one. It is a straight line, and it is diagonal, so I'm going to go y equals mx plus b. Whenever we figure out slope, we're going to go left to right. So down 1, right 2, down 1, right 2, down 1, right 2. Don't forget the x. And now I need to figure out what would be the y-intercept. So let's continue this pattern. Down 1, right 2, and I can see it would cross at negative 3. 1 half x, negative 1 half x minus 3. But it does not occur over the entire graph. It's just to the left. It's to the left of this boundary line, specifically the boundary line negative 2. It's to the left, so I draw an arrow. It goes just to the left of this. Whatever your arrow is, I bring it back, and I put it into place for the inequality symbol. Notice this has a closed dot, so there is a line underneath. Over at this time, I go through number 7. Notice number 7 is going to be like number 5 in the fact that we do have a just a horizontal line. When we have a horizontal line, and we're going to figure out where does this line cross the y-axis. So let's start with that. I have a boundary line at negative 5. Boundary line at negative 5. And I'm going to start with the one to the right. So this is a horizontal line. I want just one number. Where does it cross the y-axis? It crosses at 0. But it's not over the entire Cartesian plane. It's only on the right-hand side. It's only to the right of this boundary line. So I have x and negative 5. I look at the arrow I just drew, and I bring that inequality symbol back up there. I also can see I have a closed dot, and I will represent it with a line underneath that's included. Let's look to the left of the boundary line, and let's make these good intersection points, please. So I'm going to use y equals mx plus b. Let's figure out the slope going from left to right. 
up one, right two, up one, right two. So my slope is one half x. And now I need to determine where would this cross the y-axis if I extended it. Up one, right two, up one, right two, up one, right two. If I go through those points, it goes through at about six and a half. So plus six and a half, one half x. Whether you write six and a half or 13 over two, they're equivalent values. Mm. Again, this only occurs to the left of the boundary line. So there's my x, boundary line of negative 5. I look at this arrow and I bring it back up. Knowing that's an open circle, I do not have to put a line underneath. Jumping to number 6, number 6 on the homework, I have three different pieces I need to represent in the equation. And I have boundary lines at 0 and negative 4, at 0 and negative 4. So I'm going to start with this one. I can see it's a diagonal line. So y equals mx plus b, diagonal straight lines, linear. The slope from left to right, down 3, left 2, down 3, left 2, down 3, left 2. Don't forget the x. It's nice because I can just easily identify the y-intercept by looking at the graph. So I'll come up above, and I have negative 3 halves x plus 6. Remember, this does not occur over the entire graph. So on the right-hand side, I know it occurs to the right. It occurs to the right of this dotted line, this boundary line of 0. It occurs to the right. So I have x and 0, 0 because it's the boundary line. And I look at my arrow, and I'm going to put it into that place. Lastly, is it closed? So I need to include that point. We have a horizontal line. It would cut through at 2. Very easy. I get to come up here and simply put a 2 in place where it cuts through. But remember, it's not over the entire graph. It's between these two boundary lines of negative 4 and 0. So smaller number first, larger number second. Really confusing for students to know, like, what do your symbols look like? I always suggest going over here to the second line and drawing an arrow. We want to go to the left of this line. So I take that symbol and I put it into both positions. And then let's check if we did it right. Okay, that has to be open at 0. Okay, open at 0. We're good. And at negative 4, it has to be closed. So at negative 4, we need to include it as being closed. This one is a little tricky because it goes off the graph. So we have a, a diagonal line, y equals mx plus b, mx plus b. And let's figure out the slope. From left to right, up 3 over 1, up 3 over 1. So 3 over 1 is my slope, but it's hard to identify the y-intercept here because it's going to go off the graph. So let's estimate. 1, 2, 3 over 1, 1, 2, 3. I'm just continuing this pattern. 1, 2, 3 over 1. So I'm at 9 right now. 10, 11, 12. So this would be all the way at 12 where it would cross over. So 3 over 1x plus 12. Again, this part of the graph is only occurring to the left of this boundary line. So x and negative 4. I look at the arrow, and it does have an open circle. I leave it as is. If you're at home, I'd like you to try to press pause. Try this problem on your own. Then come back and press play as I walk through this um, without explaining. between negative 1 to 2. It only occurs between negative 1 to 2. So negative 1 to 2. Closed up. Open circle. I'm going to look at the one down here. Remember, slope is left to right. Down one, right one. Down one, right one. Down one, right one. And if I go and extend it one more time, I can see that it would cross the y-axis at negative 6. Okay. 
This is to the left of this boundary line of negative 1. Notice my arrow. And it has a closed dot. I'm going to include it.